So um, if you were to type something crazy like, I think wingdings, you can change the ribbon tabs. <laughs> so okay. now you've really changed your ribbon to yeah. something else. And uh, I always like to change it to Comic Sans just to make everyone <laughs> mad. Yeah. Hello everyone, I met John Pearson today, who's like the, the dynamo guy whatsoever. <laughs> And he agreed to giving me a few insight on what he does. So thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. And then maybe first you could tell me a bit about what, like what your journey was with Dynamo and how you ended up where you am now. For sure. So uh, yeah, I'm John Pearson. Uh, I work for a company called Parallax Team. Mm -hmm. uh, we're an implementation and BIM consultancy. Uh, we also do software and visual programming for uh, architects, engineers, um, contractors, Pretty much anyone who will touch Revit. Okay. Uh, I started out uh, in this industry more of like a modeler. So I was like mm -hmm. doing Revit models and family creation and template creation. Yeah. So, so what is your, sorry, what is your educational background? So my educational background is I'm actually trained as a drafter. So I have kind oh, of okay. a training as someone who would do Revit modeling mm -hmm. primarily. And I kind of ventured off into the world of programming and that's oh, where I've landed now. Okay. So I'm more programmer than anything else. and. Uh, one of the funny things is I'm, I'm not an architect. A lot of people yeah. think I'm an architect and I'm, okay, I'm more yeah. of a programmer than yeah, anything. Uh, so that's kind of uh, the interesting thing about me is uh, with Dynamo, I did find a new career as well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what it gave me. Um, when I first started learning Dynamo, um, it was scary. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> yeah. was, I was a Revit modeler. So like with everyone, uh, I've been right there to where it's nervous, uh, nervous feelings and it's turns red and you freak out so like yeah. I went through that journey as well it's been since 2014 that I've been using Dynamo I started uh, learning Python about a year or two later just mm -hmm. on my own and then uh, last year I started learning C Sharp um, yeah. uh, which is another programming environment for Dynamo and now I make Revit add-ins and I oh, that's cool. really modify Dynamo a lot um, as well. Maybe you could show me some of the cool things that you have developed yeah. I know that like the the ribbon ribbon spinning, spinning. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool yeah so um throughout like all of the time that i've been using dynamo yeah. uh, i started building workflows and at the dynamo workshop that we're in today i showed how to make some custom nodes as well to the user group uh, which the uk dynamo user group is phenomenal also okay. i just want to throw that out there yeah like, everybody that came to this event was really awesome and i hope they got something from it uh, but when I started making Dynamo workflows, I was like, well, I need to share these somehow. Um, I I'm making a lot of cool stuff and mm -hmm. people taught me. So I started making a package called Rhythm, which is kind of the one that I'm most known for. Yeah. Um, and I made started making that about 2015 and bundling a little useful things in it. And it's really evolved into something way bigger than it started. So it's kind of fun. Um, cool. So you're kind of hinting at it. Um, yeah. A lot of times I like to have fun as well. Um, within yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah, follow him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. worth it. A lot of times people are like, are you working on real stuff? And I'm like, yeah. very, very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, a lot of the time I think like, well, if I'm not having fun with it, like it's not really yeah. worth it to me. So I'll have fun learning something one way and it'll turn into something useful. Okay. So I'll always try to have fun. That's kind of what I like to reiterate. To yeah, people. but also it seems like you're very into when something in Revit annoys you to change that and to make your own custom solution for that. Definitely. Yeah, so anytime like either Revit or Dynamo sometimes uh, does something we don't like, we'll just we'll modify it by hacking at the API and doing some clever stuff. Uh, so one example that I kind of have open is um, they got a lot of attention. Yeah. <laughs> was setting the color of your ribbon. So oh. I actually ended up making this node called set color. Yeah. This was based off of code that was um, available on the on the internet from um, the building coder yeah so he's a great resource if you're learning yeah. coding by the way building coder um so link to that um he he shared this code and i was like man i can make dynamo nodes out of that so if we do things like pick a color mm -hmm. and just feed it to our node we uh. can start to really mess with the ui in dynamo or in revit in a really crazy way okay can you change the color as well from the from the um for the text, text for the text i don't have a text set for the color there it's possible uh, yeah. but you can change the font, the font so I'm... if you were to type something crazy like i think wingdings yeah and i think i showed this one on twitter as well 
you can change the ribbon tabs. <laughs> so okay. now you've really changed your ribbon to yeah. something else. And uh, I always like to change it to Comic Sans just to make everyone <laughs> mad. Yeah. So I think if you just put Comic Sans, especially if you you're working uh, with architects, they might get really angry at you. Exactly. They walk by and they're like, "What is this guy doing?" Ah, you have to get the exact name. So like, I think Times New, New Roman, Roman yeah. is probably one. Eh. Of course, I'm not gonna find it now. Yeah. There it is. So oh yeah. Times New yeah. So if you get the exact <laughs> font name, you can find it. So that's kind of fun. Um, the color one's really big. The color tool actually turned into a real Revit add-in for counting down how long you have it synchronized with Central. Oh. So it starts out white and it gets more red. Oh, hey, that's cool. Because users always forget to sync with Central, so yeah. now we have an add-in that we're still working on cool. that'll gradually change it to red. <laughs> so playing around turned into a serious tool. Um, I went to a user group in February, yeah. and um, we were just having fun. And there's also the ability, if we look for like a slider, so to get a good number range. Yeah. If I plug this in, I can start to rotate my ribbon. Uh, so that's, that's kind so of cool. fun. Um, this one, it was more of like an April Fool's thing I showed yeah. people. I was like, well, just put this in your dynamo graphs, and now the buttons are still usable, too. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's so cool. But what what function inside of Revit are you accessing? Like, Is it very complicated? Or? Uh, it's, um, so it's on the building coder, and what it is is the Revit toolbar. Yeah. It's basically they call it a, a window, a Windows ah. a Windows WPF window. Okay. So anything that you can do to a window in computer programming you could pretty mm -hmm. much that's do to the ribbon. Oh, that's so okay. it's kinda of funny, uh So could you also possibly drag the, the ribbon away? So you could start to move it a little bit. It does have a constraint and I'll oh, move okay. my mouse on it. It does have a constraint of this area. Area, okay. So you can start to shift it a little, you can okay. move things around. Uh, you can actually change the tab names a little bit as well, which is kind of interesting um, with this ribbon tab. This one's kind of, um, and I hit it, but ribbon tab's kind of scary because you can <laughs> turn them off, you can hide them, you can do okay. a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff. And I kind of, I got myself in trouble one time and hit a bunch of stuff. So if we do true to tell it to run, yeah. I get all my rivet tabs and then I can hide them. We'll do true for hiding them. So I hit a bunch of them, and it like really <laughs> moves them around. So the true's showing. So if I do false, it shows even hidden ones. I just hit my whole uh, rivet in a really bad way. So you can also do scary stuff. Yeah. Uh, to rivet. So always be careful as you're playing around uh, in Dynamo and just programming. Um, it's like the whole like with power yeah. comes responsibility, right? <laughs> uh, so that one's another one that's. It's in there, but I, yeah. I don't suggest really so using, using it. it. It was something I had fun making. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So yeah, that's um, those are more of the weird things. Um, just on a broader level, though, and we showed them in the workshop today, uh, I make nodes that help you do things that you can't yeah. do in regular Dynamo. So open documents in the background, yeah. upgrade them. Yeah, or the whole uh, UI kit, the user interface kit, I found very... Oh, no, that wasn't... Is that not the yeah, one? Yeah, so I, I have... Oh. Um, I have a color picker that's a UI, and I had some user messages yeah. uh, with data shapes. The custom package we showed today, he, he does it better. So okay. I, I went ahead and retired mine, uh, so use his. Okay. <laughs> so that's well, but of... I think, weren't you also the one who like had this plugin that when you want to create a model in place, that oh, will yes. restrain you from doing so? It's yeah, this one. Place, yes. <laughs> so uh, I originally learned developing for Dynamo with custom nodes, um, and now I'm making like actual add-ins. So what this does is when you try to do a model in place component, it warns you. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my company, Parallax, we have a whole ribbon of tools that we're trying to figure out how to deploy to people. Oh, cool. uh, since we're so heavy in deployments, we want them to be able to be installed really easy. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. want to send you a file that it's like, I tried to install it, now it doesn't work. We want to really make yeah. it efficient. So we're yeah. still working that out internally. Uh, but we have something like seven or eight add-ins that I've teased on Twitter. Uh, this is one cool. of them. This would this will be a free add-in for people. Yeah. And we have a bunch of other things uh, as well. So yeah. like, if someone opens a central file, it does another thing that it warns you. Uh, if you, uh, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I saw when you posted the the teaser about the uh, model in place. I think a lot of people commented, "Oh, please make it also restrain people from doing this and this and yes. this." All the, so a lot all of the, ideas. All the things that people can mess up. For sure, and that's one thing I like about like the whole Revit and Dynamo community is if you have like a little idea, someone's all, "Well, what if this happened?" Mm -hmm. You know, 
And uh, the in-place family blocker uh, led to telling people when they haven't synced in a while, which led to the color coding. Yeah. Wow, so it's that's like cool. it's like it's really cool to build upon stuff. Um, it's an awesome way. And then I still even have like that one just rolls around. Yeah. That one does nothing really that useful, but it's showing an idea can lead to something. So that's kind of one thing I like a lot. Wow, that's very cool. And Thank then, you very much yeah. for showing me. Everything. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's any questions, reach out to me on Twitter. Um, yeah. Of course, I'm always trying to be very helpful. His channel is called 60 Seconds Revit. Yeah. But I will, of course, also link it. And then, yeah, well, have a nice flight back to America. Yeah, thank you. And thank you everyone for having me. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm.